because you know what he would do? He would inject sodium bicarbonate straight into the cancer and the cancer couldn't survive. So you can use it for tumours, you can use it for cysts. Uh, I met a lady who told me she'd conquered her breast cancer by castor oil, wearing the castor oil compresses. Cancer growth is a complex and devastating disease that affects a huge number of individuals around the world. In spite of advances in medical research and treatment, it remains a major health crisis that requires a complete and complex methodology and approach. In this video, we will discuss Dr. Barbara O'Neill, share her expertise and experiences on the root causes of cancer growth and explore her innovative strategies for prevention, treatment, and healing. Join us on this important journey towards understanding and overcoming cancer. So let's just dive in. Dr. Barbara O'Neill, a famous and accomplished naturopathic doctor, has dedicated her career to carefully researching and treating cancer, a complicated and complex condition that has been the primary focus of her work. The interesting part is despite the fact that her strategies are not acknowledged by clinical specialists, she still actually has an immense following. We also looked at how one of the reasons people get sick is because of buildup of waste in the body and the body's own microbes have to evolve into bacterial forms to clean up the waste. So if you can get your lymphatic system moving, remember what it's doing? It's your vacuum cleaner. It's vacuuming your house every day. She is convinced that cancer growth isn't an illness in the classical sense, but rather an indication, a sign, and a side effect of a deeper, underlying imbalance that exists inside the body. You see, cancer cells consume 15 times the glucose of any other cell. Cancer cells are, are living up here in this very fast pathway, not giving much energy, don't have to have oxygen. Cancer cannot survive in the presence of oxygen. Isn't that strange? But what does this mean exactly? Can cancer growth at any point truly be viewed as a side effect instead of a disease itself? All things considered, Dr. O'Neill's perspective is that cancer growth is definitely not an isolated entity, but rather a consequence, an outcome, and a result of a broader dysfunction that arises from the combination of three specific factors, which include nutritional deficiency, environmental toxins, and emotional pressure. We would have never thought that emotional pressure can cause cancer. However, according to Dr. Barbara, these three factors collectively disrupt the body's natural balance and harmony, causing severe changes in the body that result in the formation of cancer. Now, you all must be thinking, in actuality, how do these factors contribute to the development of cancer in the body? Well, we've got you covered. By answering these questions, we can get a deeper understanding of Dr. Barbara's perspective and methods regarding the formation of cancer cells in the body. So let's explore this further. Now, a person can have a yeast presence in their body and not have cancer, but if it continues, it certainly can to develop to that. If it's given the right conditions, if it's given lots of sugar, acid environment, and not much oxygen. Let us talk about the three contributing factors that cause cancer. According to Dr. Barbara, first we have nutritional deficiencies. Yes, you heard that right. According to Dr. Barbara, nutritional deficiencies can cause cancer. We must know that nutritional deficiencies can cause hypocalcemia, protein energy malnutrition, and many more diseases, but the formation of cancer by nutritional deficiencies must be new to some of us. Nutritional deficiencies can lead to DNA damage and epigenetic changes in the body, which result in causing cellular dysfunction and uncontrolled cell growth. This can result in tumor formation and cancer development. For example, a deficiency in vitamin D can lead to increased cell division and reduced cell death, which is called apoptosis. This increases the risk of colorectal, breast, and prostate cancer. Moving on to the second factor, we have environmental toxins like pesticides, heavy metals, and volatile organic compounds, which are unstable in nature. Dr. Barbara mentioned that these products can cause cellular stress and inflammation, leading to DNA damage and epigenetic changes. She further said this can disturb cellular function and lead to cancer development and growth. Exposure to pesticides like Roundup has been connected to an increased risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, DNA damage, and genetic problems in the body. Now lastly, we have emotional stress causing cancer. According to Dr. Barbara, emotional stress triggers the release of stress hormones like cortisol, which can disturb the body's natural ability to regulate itself and cause a dysfunctional immune response. According to her, 
Chronic stress can lead to DNA damage, telomere shortening, and genetic changes, increasing the risk of cancer in the body. For example, severe and constant stress can be linked to an increased risk of breast cancer and colon cancer. There are a few contributing factors to breast cancer, and one is hormonal imbalance, absolutely, but another is bras. One of the worst bras is the underwire bras because breast tissue is predominantly lymphatic tissue, and the breast tissue is designed to empty into the nodes under the arms, and you've got this wire there that just locks it. Once these imbalances cause cancer, our bodies undergo many changes. As Dr. Barbara mentioned, as a naturopathic doctor, I've seen firsthand how cancer can affect the body in profound ways. At the cellular level, cancer can cause uncontrolled growth of cells and multiple divisions, leading to tumor formation. This can disturb and destroy normal tissue function and lead to a range of symptoms, including fatigue, weight loss, pain, and changes in digestion or bowel movements. According to Dr. Barbara, as cancer progresses, it can also affect organs and systems throughout the body, leading to more severe symptoms. For example, cancer can spread to the bones, causing pain and weakness, or to the liver, affecting digestion and metabolism. But this is not it. Cancer can have a serious impact on our mental and emotional health, leading to anxiety, depression, and stress. Dr. Barbara mentioned as a holistic practitioner, I believe it's crucial to address these aspects of cancer to find better and more reliable treatments to deal with it. By understanding the complex ways cancer affects our bodies, we can develop a more comprehensive approach to treatment and care, one that addresses the whole person's body, mind, and spirit. But what can we do to prevent cancer? What does Dr. Barbara say about it? Well, let's find out. Dr. O'Neill strongly advocates a comprehensive and holistic approach to cancer treatment. A holistic approach is a detailed and integrated method of addressing health and wellness. Considering the interconnectedness of an individual's physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual aspects. The following steps can be taken to incorporate holistic practices into a cancer treatment plan. Firstly, you can make dietary changes. Dr. Barbara O'Neill's dietary approach to cancer treatment is based on the belief that a well-nourished body is better equipped to heal and combat disease. Her approach focuses on a holistic and detailed dietary plan that prioritizes whole, unprocessed foods as the foundation for optimal health. As the core of her dietary plan, there is an emphasis on whole foods, which are rich in essential nutrients, fibers, and antioxidants. These foods are chosen for their ability to provide the body with the necessary tools to support immune function, reduce inflammation, and promote overall health and well-being. Gave herbs for the service of man, so they come in to serve you. So what are some of the herbs? I define it in my book, garlic. Garlic is a potent fungal killer. Moreover, Dr. Barbara encourages individuals to focus on vegetables, fruits, whole grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats, which form the basis of a balanced and nourishing diet. In addition to emphasizing whole foods, Dr. O'Neill's dietary methods also place a major emphasis on plant-based nourishment. Plant-based food sources are rich in phytochemicals and antioxidants, which have been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties and support the immune system. By adding a variety of plant-based foods into their eating routine, people can provide their bodies with the important tools to fight cancer and promote overall well-being. Dr. O'Neill additionally focuses on the significance of picking organic products whenever the situation allows. Organic food varieties are grown without the utilization of harmful pesticides and heavy metals, which can negatively affect overall well-being. By adding organic foods to their diet, people can limit their exposure to these harmful substances and help their bodies with the nutrients they need to flourish. One organic tomato can have nine times the iron of a conventionally grown tomato. Did you know that? One more important part of Dr. O'Neill's dietary approach is the decrease in sugar consumption. Sugar has been shown to fuel inflammation and cancer cell development, making it a critical component of cancer treatment. By restricting sugar intake and focusing on natural sources of sugar, for example, fruits and vegetables, people can support their body's natural healing processes. Healthy fats are likewise a basic part of Dr. O'Neill's dietary plan. Food varieties rich in healthy fats, like avocados, nuts, and olive oil, help the body with a stronger immune system. These fats are also essential for the absorption of vitamins and minerals, making them a critical part of a balanced diet. 
At last, Dr. O'Neill also focuses on the importance of sufficient hydration. Water is a fundamental element for the detoxification of natural cell health, making it an important part of cancer treatment. By drinking a lot of water over the day, people can support their body's natural healing processes and overall health and wellness. Dr. Barbara's targeted supplementation approach is a vital part of her complete dietary plan for cancer treatment. This approach centers around some specific supplements and nutrients that have been scientifically proven and demonstrated to have anti-cancer properties. Dr. Barbara suggests omega-3 unsaturated fats, especially EPA and DHA, which have been shown to restrain cancer cell development and decrease inflammation. She advises acquiring these fundamental unsaturated fats through food sources like fatty fish, flax seeds, and pecans, as well as supplements. Vitamin D is another crucial supplement, which assumes a critical part in cancer control and treatment. Dr. Barbara recommends ensuring satisfactory vitamin D levels through sun exposure, diet, and supplementation, as research has connected a lack of vitamin D to increased cancer risk. Antioxidants, like vitamin C and E, are additionally fundamental in Dr. Barbara's supplementation approach. These nutrients assist with shielding cells from oxidative harm, slowing the development and progression of cancer cells. Food sources rich in antioxidants include berries, salad greens, and nuts. Dr. Barbara additionally focuses on the significance of probiotics, which support gut health and immune function. A healthy gut microbiome is essential for optimal nutritional absorption and immune system function, both critical in cancer treatment. Apart from that, other supplements that are also important for Dr. Barbara's methods include turmeric, which contains a very powerful antioxidant called curcumin, and green tea extract, which is rich in antioxidants and may help with reducing cancer risk. Dr. Barbara additionally recommends probiotics, which are believed to have immune-boosting properties and may help the body to function effectively without any side effects. Moving on to the second approach. As suggested by Dr. Barbara, stress management and mind-body treatments can play a crucial part in cancer treatment and recovery. She believes that constant pressure can weaken the immune system and increase the risk of cancer. Mind-body therapies can help with lessening stress and promoting relaxation, which in turn can support the body's natural defense against disease. Dr. Barbara suggests a range of stress management and mind-body treatments, including deep breathing activities, which can help with decreasing stress to provide a relaxed environment. She also recommends methods like progressive muscle relaxation, rebounding, visualization, and guided imagery, which can help with lowering tension and give a feeling of well-being. And Epsom salts is magnesium sulfate. And magnesium is a, um, a muscle relaxant. So if someone's stressed out, sore muscles, can't sleep, they can have a, a Epsom salts bath before they go to bed. Even put a couple of cups of Epsom salts in a hot bath. As Dr. Barbara says, when we're under pressure, our body's natural defenses are disturbed, making us more vulnerable to diseases. By adding stress management and mind-body therapies to daily practice, we can support our mental health. Now, what if I told you that emotional support can make a real difference in your journey toward healing? Dr. Barbara believes that, surrounded by the right people and mindset, you can tackle this disease head-on. Imagine a scenario where you have a support network that truly understands your feelings, maybe your family, friends, and healthcare professionals who understand what you are going through. This is what Dr. Barbara recommends, and it really is a game-changer. With open communication, empathy, and better understanding provided by the perfect support and outlook, you can say goodbye to the feeling of anxiety and isolation. But here is the thing. Emotional support isn't just about feeling better. It's likewise about getting better all along. Dr. Barbara suggests that our emotional health has direct effects on our physical health. So, by addressing emotional distress, you can really improve your symptoms, personal satisfaction, and quality of life. Now, I know what you all must be thinking. How would I even start building this support network? Great question. Dr. Barbara suggests starting with little steps, like reaching out to a trusted friend or family member or joining a support care group. Also, remember, it's okay to ask for help. That is what this journey genuinely is all about. By understanding the brain-body connection and focusing on emotional support, 
Dr. Barbara's approach empowers you to take control of your health and wellness. Lastly, Dr. Barbara focuses on the importance of spiritual support in dealing with cancer. Recognizing that an individual's spiritual beliefs and values can play a vital part in their ability to cope with the sickness. She believes that spiritual support can provide a sense of meaning, purpose, and comfort, which can be particularly important for cancer patients who are facing a life-threatening illness. As suggested by Dr. Barbara, spiritual support can take many forms, including prayers, meditation, and association with a higher power, or a sense of something greater than oneself. She encourages cancer patients to explore their own spiritual beliefs and values, and to seek out spiritual support from friends, family, or spiritual leaders. Dr. Barbara also focuses on the importance of creating a supportive community that sustains the spirit, where cancer patients can feel reassured and share their expectations, fears, and dreams without any judgment. She believes that this type of community can help cancer patients find meaning and purpose in their experience, and give them a sense of belonging and connection that is essential for healing. By acknowledging the spiritual dimension of cancer, Dr. Barbara's approach recognizes that healing is not just about the body, but also about the mind and spirit. She encourages cancer patients to embrace their spirituality as a source of strength and comfort, and to seek out spiritual support as an important part of their healing journey. Thank you for joining us today as we share Dr. Barbara O'Neill's thought-provoking journey into the world of cancer. While her unconventional approach and challenge of traditional wisdom might have connected with some, others might have found her perspectives controversial or provocative. Join us in the comments below to share your thoughts and continue the conversation. Subscribe to our channel for more informative and thought-provoking content.